The use of cinnamon for seedlings is very popular, whether it's for preventing dampening off of the seedlings or if it's preventing fungus or fungal growth on the soil surface. But is it true that it works? Like, is there any science to support that this works? Well, in today's video, we're gonna talk about exactly that. So it is a known fact that cinnamon is both antifungal and antibacterial. And it comes down to two main active ingredients within the cinnamon itself. So the first one is cinnamon semininalehyde, I will put it here. And the second one, you know, Eugenio, again, I will put the name here. The levels of these can change between the different species of cinnamon, because so there's like over 300 species of cinnamon plants that are out there. And so the levels of these can vary. Now the Sri Lankan cinnamon is known to be the best or the highest level of both antifungal and antibacterial properties. And so when it comes to studies, these are the ones that are used the most often. However, when it comes to using these with houseplants or with vegetables, there are a few reasons why this may or may not work for you. The first reason being there's 300 species and there's no guaranteeing what species is in your no name herb packet unless it's specified. So because of that, it's really difficult for us to know even by gram or by percentage, how much of that would be one of those two active ingredients that are involved in the antifungal or the antibacterial properties of the cinnamon itself. But say you have experienced some benefit to the actual cinnamon, it's likely because it's a fresher cinnamon, which brings me to my second point. If the cinnamon is aged or you don't know how old your cinnamon powder is, the effectiveness of those active ingredients goes down over time. The fresher the cinnamon, the better it is at controlling both fungal and bacterial issues. So if you just grab something out of your kitchen you purchased two months ago, there's no guarantee that it's exposure to oxygen and its usage and et cetera and so forth that you would have those active ingredients within the product itself. Now, what I will say is that the studies that have been done on using this for antifungal and antibacterial properties in a soil scenario really truly are showing the best results when using an oil. So a cinnamon oil, specifically an essential oil specifically, has higher levels of both active ingredients and therefore is most likely to actually work as a preventative and show the best result. So I have used it in the past and I found, you know, some years it's successful for me, some years it's not successful. I just completely cut it out entirely as a, a product that I do use only because of the unreliability of it. But regardless, if you were to use this and you wanted to actively use this as a, a true prevention for both bacterial and fungal problems, you'd want the essential oil is what it, what it comes down to. Now say, I've convinced you otherwise when it comes to the cinnamon powdered form that we find in our cupboard and you're still looking for a way to control mold. The easiest answer here is vermiculite. So a broadcasting vermiculite on the soil surface. I did a whole video on why this is and why it works. So go check that out. The second thing you wanna do is a fan. So moving a fan or air across that soil surface is going to be very important because it increases the rates of evaporation. And the faster we have water evaporating, the less likely it is that those spores will colonize. The third tip here is hold off on using micro myco or mycelium product until you're bumping up your plants or transplanting outdoors. The reason for this is because the hyphae will present itself on the soil surface. And while not damaging to adult plants, if it overruns a seed starting kit, it can get a little bit hairy uh, as to whether or not it's gonna work out for you. So hold off on using myco products, whether it's a potting soil inoculated with it, or if it's an addition that you're, you're using. And I can do a video on that when that time comes in the year. The next thing is lighting. So make sure your lighting is in check. Make sure it's at the right height, the right intensity, you name it. The reason for this is because if that plant is actively growing, it is actively uptaking water and nutrients and therefore cycling said water and nutrients and an active flowing moving water, even on a microscopic scale, is going to prevent potential mold buildup. So just make sure that that's all in place. If you follow all these rules and you should be just fine. A little bit of fungi is not a bad thing. Not a bad thing whatsoever. And if it's really driving you nuts, just simply scrape it off the top and do so as needed throughout time. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!